Okay, thank you, Pastor Kwame. Uh, let's just close our eyes and, and welcome the spirit of the, the Lord here, as well as Pastor Isabel um, today. Our Father and our God, we, we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you because um, you, you make the plans for us, Lord. As much as we try, you make the plans for us, Lord. You say that you order our steps, Lord. And so for that, we're just really grateful, Father, to have been led by the Spirit here on this beautiful Sunday, Father, that you're just in our midst, Lord, that you're working um, within us and within the well, Father. Father, I, I just pray that our hearts would just start just really opening up to what it is that you have to minister to us today, Lord, that we would be receptive to your word, which is the bread of life, Father, that we would just leave here tonight, today, Lord, not just be hearers of the word, but Lord, we would be doers of the word. We would go back into our respective lives, into our family, into our place of work, Lord, and, and, and apply that word. Father, that it would really become flesh in our lives. Amen. And so, Lord, as we welcome uh, Pastor Isabel to, to, to speak to us today, Lord, we, we just trust that your spirit within her would be at work, Lord, that there would be no nerves, no fear, Lord, that you would just really take over, Lord, that you would really guide her. Amen. That she would speak to every one of us, Lord, in the different in the different places in our lives, because that's the kind of God that you are, Father. You meet us exactly where we are, Lord. Yeah. That you would fill up her cup, Lord, today and every other day after that, Lord. That you would reward her for her service, Lord, for her heart, for for you and the people. Oh, Father God, that your spirit would just be present on today. Oh, Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you for her life. Lord, I thank you for the brethren that are present here. Oh, that you would just move and just do miraculous things in this month of December, Lord. That you would just be glorified through her. Amen. Amen. And so, Father God, we just say thank you. Thank you. Lord, we, we are ready for what we've come, Lord, expectant of what you're going to do. And we say thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are grateful that Mama Pauline had to stay home and attend the well. So we thank God for your presence in our midst. Amen. I want to greet the house in the name of the Lord and also to extend my condolences to the family of the ATS. I heard uh, we, uh, our brother lost his father, sister, mm -hmm. and his husband. So Thank you. Um, our condolences, my brother, we are with you. May the Lord comfort you mm -hmm. and your entire family. So we are here with you in this time of mourning. So thank you. And thank you. Can, uh, please do reach out. We want to thank the Lord for this great day that he has made. And we know that we all are rejoicing and we are glad in it. So before we get into the word, I would just want us to start by sharing in the communion of the Lord. So if we can grab our elements. We know that Christ broke bread to demonstrate to us what he was going to go through and why. He was going to go through that. And as Paul taught, he said, when we do that, we do it in remembrance of the Lord, but we have to do it in a worthy manner. So I just want us to be conscious of this um, act that we are about to perform. That is not just, you know, something that we do as a tradition as Christians but it's an open demonstration that we understand that Christ did this for us. His body was broken for us. His blood was shed for us. And as we understand that, we know that the word of God tells us that for lack of knowledge, God's people perish. So when we do this, 
which symbolizes our understanding of that which Christ had done for us. It is an open show and a demonstration to the enemy who is the accuser of the brethren that we know and this is our portion. Christ's body was broken for us. His body was broken for our healing, our wholeness. So wherever we may feel broken today, I want us to think about this and remind ourselves because Christ said we should do this in remembrance of him, which means remembrance of his sacrifice. Let's think about that. So what is it in your life that is broken? Emotionally, spiritually, physically, what is it that is broken? Christ paid that price already. So this is a confession we are making and letting the enemy know that he's not gonna have any hold on us because we are free from all of that. Christ did it for us, he sacrificed for us. So if we have our bread that represents the body, we can break and give thanks to the Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. Lord, we remember all that which you did for us. You said we should put you in remembrance and this is our way of reminding you, Lord, that we are conscious of that which you did for us. It is written in your word and your word is all we need. So we come back to that word and we say, your body that was broken for us, oh Father, paid the price. Today we have received healing from you. We've received wholeness from you. Wholeness in everything that concerns us, our relationships, our homes, our family, our loved ones, oh Father. This day we pray and we decree and declare that we receive wholeness in our businesses, all that concerns us, oh God, as your body was broken. In Jesus' name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. We can go ahead and take. And the Bible tells us that on the same night, Jesus also took the wine and said, that represents his blood that will be shed for us. So today we remember that his blood was shed for us. That is what gave us access to be able to call on God the Father, Abba Father. That same blood speaks on our behalf and the Bible says it speaks better things. It speaks reconciliation, speaks empowerment. The blood is a weapon. So as we lift this up, we thank God because he has given us his blood that grants us access. And today we are able to move and enter boldly into the presence of God because of that blood. So let's thank God for the sacrifice. We know that blood is what is needed in covenants. And the blood of Jesus was shed as the new covenant. I just want us to thank him for his blood that was shed and to remind ourselves that this blood is speaking on our behalf. So whether it be the things of the past, whatever might be speaking against someone from their foundation, this blood has the power to trace all the way back and erase all the handwriting, the covenants of the enemy. So let's thank God for the blood. Father, we are grateful for your blood that was shed for us. We are grateful for this blood that is ever powerful and always fresh. The blood that continues to speak better things on our behalf. The blood that has brought us into the presence of the Father. The blood that has cleansed us and made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That boldly we can run into his name and be saved because you said the righteous run into your name and they are saved. Through this blood, we have access. We have security. We have all that it takes to live a life of godliness. Father, we say thank you. We pray, oh God, that this blood will continue to speak on our behalf and on the behalf of our loved ones. That this blood, oh God, that has power to protect, will protect us. God, we just want to thank you because this was the great sacrifice that you gave us. And today we come in appreciation 
and we say thank you that as we take it, let each and every one of us be conscious of that which had been done more than 2000 years ago on our behalf and that it is still speaking today and it is still powerful. In Jesus' name we have prayed, amen. Amen. Let's go ahead. amen. 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 Father, we thank you for a great day. We thank you for this morning. Lord, we know that you are here with us. We want to acknowledge your presence. We continue to lift you up, O oh Father, the one who sits on his throne in heaven, that you may forever be lifted up. We hallow your name, O oh God. We, we lift you high, O oh God, above every other God. We lift you high because there is none to compare with you, O oh God. This morning, we just pray that you will come and be in our midst, be our king. Remind us of that which is important. Remind us of your heartbeat, O oh God. Help us that as we receive from you, O oh Father, we will be doers and not just hear us. Holy Spirit, we want to acknowledge your presence. We say take over the service and to God be the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the title of our message today is Be and Remain Sober for These Are Perilous Times. Amen. So Mama Mildred and uh, Gentleman Kwame, you will be helping us with the scriptures to pull them up. So as we all know the times that we are going through, I believe even those who only heard stories are beginning to experience things around them that is really causing us to know that the enemy is agitating at another level. Amen. But we thank God because as children of God, we have confidence in him that even in such times, he is able to calm the storm. But he also requires us to know that we have our responsibility as his disciples and servants. So our title, to remain sober and know that these are perilous times, you know, is to help us to be able to stand and stand right in such a time and to examine ourselves because there is just no way you can know what's going on if you are not sober. If you are intoxicated in any manner, your judgment will be poor. So I would want us to read from the scripture and that will be 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 11. So please, Mama, if you can pull that up for me, I would appreciate it. I'm reading from the New King James. Hallelujah. The word of God says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9 says, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. And verse 10 says, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before we continue, I just want us to look at the word sober. Sober means you are not intoxicated. You are you are, you are, I would say you are free from any influence of any substance. I know when I say this, we may only think about alcohol, drugs, but as believers, that may not be our problem. That may not be our challenges. But if the word of God asks us to be sober, it means there is something that God requires of us when he talks about sobriety. And uh, as we can see, there are so many things that would intoxicate a Christian. I'm talking about a disciple. And often it's the mind 
sometimes our emotions and so many other things, sometimes the distractions around us can carry us away and our thinking would not be clear. So to be sober means you are mentally in control of situations. As we all know, there are so many things that will make you not be mentally in control. Your judgment will be poor. Everybody will see and wonder why, how could you? But that is because at that moment, you are not mentally right. You've been taken over by another spirit. So the Bible continues to tell us to be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So which means if we are not vigilant, being vigilant means keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulties, carefully noticing problems or signs of danger. So we know that we have to be watchful in this time. We have to be very careful and watchful. If you are not, you may not be able to pick the subtle ways of the enemy. We also know that the scripture tells us to be, to not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. So if you are not sober, you may remain ignorant because there is a lot that comes to us looking like right. There is a lot that comes to us, which is wolf in sheep clothing. And most often, if we don't have that discernment, if we are not spiritually sober, if we are not vigilant, we will not pick it. And then by the time you realize the enemy will push through and the Bible tells us that you can't like a roaring lion, which means even the sound is so intimidating. If you are not discerning, you may not even realize that, oh, it's the devil who is just a toothless bulldog to those who have believed in Christ. And that may destabilize you. So who is our adversary? Our adversary is the devil. And the dictionary defines him, uh, um, adversary as one opponent in a contest, conflict or dispute. One that contends with you, opposes or resists an enemy or opponent. Dictionary.com also defines adversary as a person, group or force that opposes or attacks opponents, enemy and force. So you can see how hard an adversary can be, how determined they can be to stand against you. The word of God describes the devil, Satan, as the accuser of the brethren, which means if you are not sober, if you are not vigilant, he will bring things at you that he will use against you. I'll bring in a lot of, you know, just a bit of some legal aspects. You go to court and you have the one who has accused you. I'll liken that now to the devil. You know, his determination is to make sure that he counters everything about you, but it has to be by the book. It has to be by the law that is written. So he has to look for ways for you to plead guilty. So if Satan has been described as the accuser of the brethren, know that he knows the word and he has to find every way possible for you to fall against that same word because that is what he will use to fight you. So if you are not sober, it is very possible that in a very subtle way, you may have that misjudgment and you may have something that when raised against you, you will be guilty. If you are not vigilant, you may have that which may be raised against you by the accuser of the brethren. Because the Bible tells us that he's coming around like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. So we have to make sure that we are standing well and standing right. I am so grateful uh, to our sister Eva this morning, the song that she blessed us with, because actually when I was looking at the words, it, it granted me more utterance. We thank God for that. When the song says, and I will keep my eyes above, wa above the waves, when oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours and you are mine. Oh, yes. For that to say, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger. So if our eyes are not up, if our eyes, if our focus is not on him, 
And let's remember that the enemy has so many strategies. If you don't have a clear vision, if you are not sober, he will come against you in a way that you may even think that this is God. Because remember, God says he blesses and adds no sorrow to it. Satan too will give you things that may look good, but the only difference is that he will add sorrow. So how would you tell the difference if you are not sober? A lot of times we say a door has opened for me. How do you know that it is God? Because the enemy can open a door. The only difference is that he will add sorrow to it. Amen. God will not add sorrow when he opens that door. But when the enemy opens, he will add sorrow. So if you are not sober, if you are not vigilant, you will run through that door and then you encounter sorrow. So may the Lord help us. I just want us to take a look at some things that can hinder our sobriety in the spirit. We know as children of God, times have changed. And the way the gospel was preached in the past is not the same. Today, we, we, we know that all good gifts come from God, but we are expressing it in a different way because we think a pastor needs to dress like this, a pastor needs to drive in this car, a pastor needs to do this, he needs bodyguards, he needs this, the size of his church needs to be this big. And because of that, a lot has crept into the body of Christ, which is not of God, I would say. And then we lose our sobriety, our spiritual sobriety. Pride has crept into the church. And I would want, Mama, please, if you can pull this up for me, Proverbs 11, 2, and then after that, you pull up Proverbs 16, 18. And let's just look at what pride is all about. Because some pastors, I would say, have been so blessed that they have all these material riches, the size of the church and all of this, then pride comes in. Because even when you hear them talk, it's not about Christ as much as what they have acquired. And I'm not talking only about pastors, us as believers. Sometimes our testimony become a door for the enemy to push pride through. The Bible tells us that when pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. So no matter how much we are blessed, we have to remember this. We have to remain humble. We have to remain humble and we have to pray for it because the devil is very aggressive. The Bible has told us our adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion. He is very aggressive and he will push these things at you. And sometimes you will not even realize Yes, you gave a testimony. God blessed me and he did this. And this is what he has done. And everyone can see and know that indeed, this is God. We saw you when you prayed for this or we were there together. We prayed and God answered. But then now this same testimony became an object of pride. What's going on? Your focus is on that. Why are you not fellowshipping with us today? Oh, you know because of this, the same thing that was a blessing has become a stumbling block. And then now you guard it so much, your, your attention is, and then you, or you even start minimizing the same people who were there to work with you to get to that level. Now they are no more of your class. Now you have left them and you're looking for people of a higher level because that is your standard now, pride has taken over. Now you, your judgment has been so blurred. You, you, you can't see it right anymore. You cannot even tell that, oh, now this is not of God anymore. Now you start interacting with people that you think you have the same things. You don't even know where they got theirs from. And like I said earlier, God would bless you. The enemy will throw things at you. But the difference is in the end. So we have to be watchful. We have to be sober. We have to know that pride is of the devil. We have to know that pride is not of God. We have to be conscious. When you see it coming, you nip it before it shoots up. Because when it gets to a certain stage, you cannot capture it anymore. And it will only lead you to shame at the end of the day. Because the devil doesn't give you anything and let you enjoy it like God would give you and add no sorrow to it. By the time you think you are enjoying, he hits you. And then you see people start blaming God or people start thinking that, Oh, this was a man of God. I know this man or this and that. How did that happen? That is because you gave room and you lost sight 
You were not vigilant to see when the enemy was walking in. So pride is one of those things that we have to watch out for in us. God will do so many things. He will cause you to speak to kings, but that should not become your focus because our focus is not his hands. It's not even his acts. It's his heart that we are seeking. So as he continues to bless you, we continue to seek his heart. We continue to seek his heart. We don't settle for that and think we have arrived. Or you say, because this is what God gave me, then this is it. Tomorrow he may be saying something else. We have to move with him. And just like Paul said that he's forgetting those things that are past and he's pressing on. We don't have to, you know, get settled on these things and feel like, oh, I've arrived. And then now we start projecting these things with pride and forget the God who is the giver. We start seeking the, when you seek the gift and not the giver, at the end of the day, when you get the gift, most often we fail after because our focus becomes the gift and not the giver. So let's watch out for pride. Let's be sober. Let's be vigilant. I keep saying this. I pray every day and I beg God, Father, I pray. Help me, Lord. I want you to help me by your grace that I will not have false humility. May the Lord help me and humble me. Sometimes it's so hard to even think about the way God can humble you. Because he can humble you in a way that nobody else would understand. And sometimes we are so afraid of that. But anyhow, he does it is the best. So let's watch out. Let's be sober. Let's be vigilant. Let's pride creeps in. Those things will blind you as a Christian and impair your walk with Christ. Another thing that would blind the children of God is anger. There is a lot of provocation. These are perilous times for real. A lot of things would bring anger, even to believers, even to children of God. And when you calm down, then you realize that this was not me. I was working or walking under the influence of anger. And you see when somebody is angry, somebody did a demonstration and he said, you know, when people just start out in a relationship when the love is just like over the roof. The slightest word they say, as low as the voice could be, the other person hears. But as the relationship grows and then maybe you start fighting and anger comes in, when you're angry, you see that you have to scream, even the person is sitting right next to you. That is what anger would do. Anger separates people. Anger makes you far. Anger makes the other person unreachable. Anger is something that will blind you. It will mess up your judgment. So be it our older ones, the younger ones, children, I'm pleading with you all and us, myself. May the Lord help us to realize that anger is not of God. See how hard Moses worked. See how much he loved God. And even for the sake of God, he was angry and he never entered the promised land. Look at what anger can do. And your judgment is so impaired. Because at that moment, because he was angry, his judgment was impaired because the mission that God had sent him on to come and give the commandments to his children was somehow interrupted because of his anger. And he had to broke the, 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 the commandment that he had. He had to break it because of anger. And today in our lives, you and I, let's examine what is it that is impairing our vision. Think about the moments when you are angry. Think about even the thoughts you have. I thank God because some people have mastery of their words, but then the truth is, how do you feel inside about the other person when you are really angry at them? Is that godly? Then when you, you, you realize that the fruits of the spirit have disappeared because anger has blurred your judgment, anger has stood in the gap, and now you are even unable to reach out like God wants you to reach. So I just want us to pray that we will be sober. We will not look through anger. 
when it comes, may the Lord help us. And I know it's only by his grace because the things that are going on all around us will provoke you to anger, ungodly anger even, because it is things that you would wonder how a human or how anyone can even get to that level. And sometimes you feel like you're doing God justice but no, he still wants you to have that sound mind in your judgment. So let's not let anger impair our judgment. Let's not let anger impair or, or, or disrupt our walk with God because indeed it does. And I pray for grace that God would help me that I would be sober at all times and anger would not impair my judgment in my walk with him. Sometimes you may, God would send you to, to minister to someone but they are just so unbearable, for real. And they will push you, push your buttons, push it to the limits. And sometimes you realize that you don't complete your assignment because you get angry on the way and then you let them go. And then maybe the next day you hear, this has happened to that person. That person lost an opportunity to receive Christ because of anger. The anger is not coming from anywhere else, but from that same person. But then we have to be focused on our mission, only being sober in the Lord would help us to go through with our mission in him. Many things will rise up against us, just like the song says, that even when oceans rise, may my soul rest in your embrace, for I am yours and you are mine. And I am serious that when we practice this, it works. There are moments when things will come against you. You just have to remind yourself of the presence of God, the presence of the spirit, and you just calm yourself down. Sometimes you are even able to completely shut out of a conversation because now you are meditating on what God would do. And now whatever is happening around there is not taking over you. So we have to remember this. Anger is one of the things that will intoxicate the life of a Christian and impair your judgment and even be a stumbling block on your assignment. Another case is bitterness. And for unforgiveness, let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. And if you would uh, need scriptures for anger, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, and James chapter 1, 19 to 20. So that for your records, please, you can always refer back to that. So bitterness, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Please, Mama, can you pull that up for us? It says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. God does not want that. It's not of God. It's not of God. It's not of God. We have to have this in us and know that when we get bitter, it's not of God. The enemy, if he comes, he will find something in you. He is the accuser of the brethren. That is something we have to know. And if we know that in legal stance, someone who is even accusing you falsely can give you a leading statement that will cause you to say, I plead guilty, then you are guilty. God, Jesus has set us free. He paid the price. We are free completely. But the accuser of the brethren is still after you, wanting you to still plead guilty, even after you know that you have been set free. You have pled, Jesus already pled for your sake and made you free. And today you can stand and say, I know I am free because the Lord paid the price. But the accuser of the brethren is still at work. He's going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So when he comes and he finds anger or bitterness in you, then that is a reason for him to say, you see, he is guilty. You are guilty. You are guilty because that's not of God. God says you should put that away from you. Every bitterness, anger, malice, whatever it is, it's not of God. So that is of the enemy. So if the accuser of the brethren comes, would he find that in you? Because Jesus said he came and he found nothing of his in him. And today we are living the life of Christ. And we have to pray by his grace that we'll be able to be blameless when the enemy comes. We have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We have to honor our God. I am so sick and tired of people talking about the grace of God and then spitting on his face and at the same time saying that they are children of God. That grace is for us to live right. 
That grace is to empower us to live for him. We cannot be the same. It is true. If somebody provokes you, you get angry. And when it stays, it be, you become bitter. That is just the natural way. But we are spirit beings. I'm still working on myself for real. And I'm talking like this and I'm angry at myself. I'm talking about holy anger because I don't need to be angry to the extent that I may end up being bitter. It's not of God. Jesus already saved me and he has placed me above all of these things. I need the grace to be able to rise up above this. We need grace to be able to rise up above. So examine yourself because the truth is, okay, you have to pray for someone that has really hurt you, really hurt you continuously. They hurt you, you forgive them. They hurt you, you forgive them. They hurt you, you forgive them. It comes to a point, you say, okay, you know what, I'm done. I want to cut this person off. They come, they apologize, they repent. You say, okay, no problem. You, you, then you just realize that this person has nothing good for you. And the pain is just like the wound was there, it was healing, and they just keep scraping, scraping, scraping. It gets to a place where you will be bitter when you see, you don't want to see this person. When you see them, you feel it. I may mm -hmm. say with my mouth, you know what? I have forgiven them. I don't hold anything about them against them, sorry. But when you hear their name, uh, how do you feel? Uh -uh. What happens in the insight? Can you genuinely pray for them? I'm talking uh -uh. about from the spirit, or you just do it because you want everybody else to know that you are a Christian who prays for your enemy. They did wrong, for real. You did nothing wrong. You don't even deserve what they did against you. Everybody else knows that if they were the ones, they would not have anything to do with this person. But then as a disciple that God has called and he says, you should pray for your enemies. What kind of prayer are you praying for them? Is it with your lips and your heart far away? Or oh, because when bitterness is there, it's like it just quotes, it quotes your heart from the truth so it doesn't penetrate it's like you're at the outer court and you're expecting to encounter the father there and that is one thing that happens with most of us i have thought about that of myself is it every time that i pray that i get into the holy of holies or i just do it as a christian duty because if you're out the outer court you've not encountered the father so did you pray so bitter, bitterness is something that would intoxicate us as Christians. And you cannot even pray from a bitter heart because the Lord says, who would ascend the holy hill of the Lord? He that has a pure heart and clean hands. So how can you ascend that hill with a bitter heart? Is it a pure heart? And the truth is there is every reason that is what has happened perilous times will make you bitter. So when that happens, you realize that you are blinded that moment. You realize that your judgment is not right. You realize that you're not even living in truth. So I want us to pray that we will not be intoxicated by bitterness in the name of Jesus. And then on forgiveness, Matthew chapter six, verse nine, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. He taught us how to pray and he says, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us. If the measure of forgiveness that God has to give us is based on how we forgive others. I just want us to think about that. Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not like I will not forgive and then God should forgive us. Hmm. So I just want us to, when you read the entire Lord's Prayer, you go down to the verse where it talks about forgiveness. So I want us to know that it is not easy. I know how when I'm hurt, I say, Lord, I'm really hurt. I don't think I can deal with this. I'm not ready for this person. But one thing I would confess is that I know that you, you oh God, can help me go through this my heart is ready for you to you know help me with the forgiveness journey when it comes to this situation but right now i don't because i have to be honest with god anyway you cannot fake if you say yes lord i forgive them 
and you've not forgiven them, then that's a lie. You are even in denial and there is no way healing can take place. So yes, there are situations that would come and it's hard to forgive as a human being, but God can help you to get to that place where you'll be able to forgive your enemies, forgive those who have hurt you and be able to, you know, get back to that place where you can think good of them. You can pray for them. And when we talk about forgiveness, I pray that God will give us wisdom to understand what it means when you forgive. We are not saying that when you forgive, then it means you have to be blind. But may the Lord give us wisdom in that area. May the Holy Spirit work with us to be able to forgive genuinely in Jesus' name. Another thing that blinds the children of God is jealousy. Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 5. We see how when God took Ezekiel in the spirit to see what was happening in the church, at one point he showed him the entrance, the gate, that's the, 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 the altar gate at the entrance, he said, was the image of jealousy. So as children of God, Jealousy is not of God because if you see God kept saying that they are doing these detestable things against me. And at the end of this chapter, what did God say to Ezekiel? He said they have pushed him out of his sanctuary. So as children of God, we can be in that place thinking it's a sanctuary, but God is not there. So is it anymore a sanctuary? It's not. When you, when you, when you bring idols because jealousy is an idol. It must not be a craven image. It must not be in a, in a, in a tangible form that you, you think you can touch it. Jealousy can be in your heart. And that's an idol that is against our God. And he says you would worship no other God but him. And that would make you blind when you are jealous. You are jealous. You cannot operate in the spirit. When the enemy comes, then that's how he will take control over you. So we have to free our hearts from all of those things. Check our hearts daily as children of God and make sure that we are not infested by all of that or, or our judgment has not been impaired. Sometimes some people will just, I would say, I don't know what, what I can use, but for no good reason, they are just against someone. Somebody will just look at somebody and just not like you. And if they have to search deep down, there is something about that person that they may want or they may admire, but because they don't have access to that person, instead of approaching that person in love and understanding the person and maybe ending up being friends, or even if the person doesn't want to be your friend, that's not a problem. Just appreciate the person. Instead, it turns to jealousy and hate. So I just want us to pray that God will help us and rid us of jealousy. Rid us, rid the body of Christ of jealousy. This was the altar of God but yet what lay at the entrance was the image of jealousy. So we have to check amongst us as children of God because we don't want to drive God out of the same place that we call a sanctuary. If God is not in it, then it is not a sanctuary because you will not find peace. You will not find anything. You will not find anything that is of God in that place. So it's just a social gathering where it's like a jungle. And that's why you will have all sort of things happening. You have gossip in church. You have all sort of things that are destructive in the house of God because people have raised that idol of jealousy. And now the judgment or whatever is taking place there is going through that. And now we cannot serve God clearly. And we are vulnerable to the enemy. We just expose ourselves to the enemy. So I just pray that God will help us in that area of our lives that we will not be found wanted or wanting when the enemy comes against us. Another thing that will make us lose our sobriety is unhealthy competition. I would say covetousness. You see what your neighbor has, you want it. You want it. You don't even care if God wants that for you. We don't seek his will about things, even in ministry. Even in ministry, it happens. This person's platform is doing so well. You want your platform to be like that. This pastor has a very big church. You want a church like that. 
this pastor touches people or he blows uh, 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 air on people's faces, they fall down and they, they, some of them, they receive deliverance in whatever area. Oh, you do the same, you start to blow. And, you know, you, uh, we just have to seek God. We don't have to look through the actions of others, be it in the church and feel like that is the standard. No. We need Christ, period. We need the Holy Spirit. We need God's will for us. His will be done in this earth as it is in heaven and not what his will is for A, B. It's about what his will is for us. And I'm saying that to each and every one of us. It's not everything that is good for everyone that is recommended for you by God. Learn to accept that which he has proportioned for you and celebrate and, 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 and work on it with his help and be the best of that. We are parts of the same body, but every part has its role to play. Every part has its role to play. I will not flip to walk with my head, maybe because I feel like the foot is taking me wherever it wants to go or whatever. And then now instead of the head thinking, the head wants to walk because the head feels like, oh, I think and I have authority, I can reason. So guess what? I'll walk with the head from now on. No, you, in, the, in the physical, you see that that's foolish. It doesn't work. And in the same, it's the same in the spirit. We should learn to avoid unhealthy competition. We should learn to avoid all those things that will make us, and because when you do that, you don't even see, you don't even hear what God is saying anymore. Paul says we should run this race according to the rules. You cannot run in another man's lane. It doesn't matter how fast you run. You run in another man's lane, you are disqualified. That is the rule. We know that. So I just want us to understand that we cannot think that we will be involved in unhealthy competition and still be able to see what God is doing in our lives or wants for us. Amen. Lust is another thing that is plaguing the body of Christ and making us unable to see. If you look at the story of Samson, he was a man of God, a man, a powerful person, a powerful man of God, but he had secrets that were exposed because of lust. And if you see what happened to him at the end of the day, you realize that he paid the price. The enemy came against him and he paid the price. So we should think about it. We cannot lust after anything. We cannot lust after money. We cannot lust even after, after a, 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 a woman, a man. You cannot lust after somebody's ministry. Do not, lust is not right. Because when you are lusting, you don't see right. You, you, your, your desire is to get that which you are going after to the extent that whatever is happening outside of that, you don't see. Mm. Look at Samson. He sold himself to Delilah because of lust. And he was captured by the Philistine and treated like a dog. But that is a man of God. His judgment was impaired because of lust. He knew that if he told the secret and the woman had tried so many times and he held on. But when the woman told him, it looks like you don't really love me. How could you tell me this? And it doesn't happen. How could you tell me this? How many times? And it doesn't happen. So how can you claim to love me? And you cannot tell me exactly. How can you be so lost that you will not even realize that this person is out to get me? The focus was after the woman and not even his own security or even the grace of God upon his life. So we have to make sure that lost is far from us. That is not something that we can have and still be operational in the kingdom of God rightly. Because the scripture tells us that Samson, when he got up after his locks had been cut off, he tried, he thought he would do the same thing that he had always done. But then when he tried, he realized that the spirit of God had left him. 
So which means till that moment, he did not even realize that he was powerless until when there was need for, for, for him to manifest in power. So if you are lost in, you may just lost your way all the way into a pit without realizing that God is not even working with you anymore. The spirit of God has left and you are on your own. So let's be aware of lost. When it comes, you slap your head like, hey, get back in place. <laughs> you make sure that, uh, because the enemy will pass it in front of you. He will bring it. But the thing is that, like Paul said, cast it down, all those imaginations, cast them down. Anything that tries to lift itself above the name of the Lord, subdue it. So please, if we have such imaginations, the problem is not in the imaginations. The problem is in you not casting them down. Make sure that you subdue it and take authority over that, that it will not take authority over you. Amen. Amen. If we also, I would want us to read 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Mama, please, if you can bring that up for me. Please, please, please. 1 John 2, 16. Okay. Okay. Do we have that? Coming up. Amen. Amen. That's John chapter 2, verse 16. Okay, it reads, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. So there is no way we can justify that. It's not of the Father. So as believers, which life are we living? To be spiritually minded, we know when you are spiritually minded, that is of Christ. If you are carnally minded, that is a dead situation. So what life are you living? Would you let lust take over you? Lust which is not of God. And we go about proclaiming that we are of God. I just want to bring us to this. We don't want to have the form of godliness and yet weak. We don't want to have that form. Everybody sees and know this is a Christian. Oh, this is a person of God. This is that. This is, and then like the Bible says, you deny the power thereof, which means there is no evidence. All they see is what you say, whether you decide to Say it with your mouth or tie your head all the way and, 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 you know, all those different things you choose to do, but no evidence in the sense that you don't apply yourself as the sword of the earth or the light of the world. That is waste. That's why Jesus had to describe the Pharisees as whitewashed tombs which means in the physical is nice, beautiful, but in the inside is dead, bones, stench. So we have to make sure that we remain sober. We have to make sure that we remain vigilant because the enemy is not going on any vacation anytime. He is constantly working, constantly launching against us. He is very, you know, determined to make sure that he infiltrates the children of God. It didn't start today and it's not going to end today. But if we are not sober, we will not know when he is in our midst or in operation. And we just keep dancing to the tune. And then at the end, he presents us to the father guilty. And he says, you are charged. And you, you, you won't even have any defense because he found his in you. And that is because you were intoxicated by all these different things that I've listed. And there is much more. I pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal it to us that we will see all these different things that 
is coming against the children of God. And sometimes we embrace it and not realizing that it's just going to blur our vision. And we end up not glorifying our father. You know, when I, when I think about how we are so pumped up when we hear that, you know, it's by the grace of God that we are saved and it's by his grace that we live a righteous life. And then we forget to think about the fact that as children of God, we should live a life that is pleasing to him. It breaks my heart because I wonder even our earthly fathers and mothers, if we can just do whatever pleases us and we know that it's breaking their heart and we don't care. Our earthly fathers who are so limited, we try to please them. We try to please our spouse. When we say we love someone, we try to please them. Why is it so hard sometimes for the children of God to be determined to please their father and to sacrificially do it? I pray that God will give us the grace to understand that by his grace, we have to put a smile on his face. By his grace, our father should be happy with our lives. And when we return home, he should say, welcome, good and faithful servant. May we please the Lord. May we forgo our ways. May we be sober. May we be vigilant. May we be overtaken by his power. May the Lord help us in such a time. Because the truth is playing church and talking church will not help. A lot is happening. That, you know, when you look at the power that is available, I believe as children of God, we need to have control. So what is going on? I pray that God will take us to that level where we, we can make declarations and let it be so and let the evidence be there. I have really been troubled in my spirit because there is a spirit that is going on around this season. Depression has become so strong and suicide. And I would say I was destabilized by a case that just happened of recent. And I had to come back to ask God like father, you say we should train up a child in the way they should grow, go. And when they grow up, they will not depart from it. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. If the Lord promises to teach our children and that great will be their peace. So why is it that they are losing their peace and with depression, they are killing themselves and all sort of things happening. So where is it that we have lost sobriety as children of God? We don't need to always just comfort ourselves and yet everything around us is going crazy because it feels really good to speak live and speak this and speak that and yet no power. We saw what happened. Peter's handkerchief, wherever he went, things happening. Is it that God is not looking at us today as disciples compared to the disciples of that time? I don't think so. God is constant. He is God. He is the same. We confess it. We say yesterday, today, and forever. I don't know if I'm going over time. So I just want us to come to that place and let's pray before I would hand over the, the floor back to our sister and brother. I want us to pray before, before we, we, we move on, please. That whatever has been intoxicating us in any way that the roaring, the, 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 the devil that comes like a roaring lion has been able to infiltrate the lives of our children, our children for this morning. 
that so many other people may be going through the same. May the Lord open our eyes and empower us that that which we'll be teaching our children will indeed keep them on track. It's our responsibility. May the Lord help us. I just want us to open our mouths and cry out to the Lord. Father, even your word tells us that we know in part. We are praying this morning, Lord, that you will help us in such a time. Help us in these perilous times, oh Father. In the name of God. Oh God, that we may read everything that intoxicates us. Yes, Lord. Oh Father, help us. Yes. Help us help our children. Yes. Help them. Yes. Lord, you've given us the responsibility to yes. teach them and raise them in your way. Thank you, Father. Father God Almighty, we know there is power in your word. Your word is spirit and your word is life. Children, oh God. We pray that as we begin to teach them, let them experience the spirit and the life in your word in the name of Jesus. Yes, oh God, we cry out to you for our children. Oh Father, your word says you've not given us the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of minds. We pray for our minds as parents in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we receive the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. We yes, pray for our children that they receive the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Oh God, that is all that they would think about. That is their meditation in the mighty name of Jesus. We yes. Out the spirit of anxiety in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Depression in the name of Jesus. We push you out. Oh, Father, if you will not save us, Father, are we going to do? What can we do? Oh, God, what can we do? You are the one who watches over us without any slumber, oh, God. Father, we are so limited in our own ways, but we know that you are all powerful, oh God. Yes, Remember Lord. our children in the name of Jesus, oh God. Yeah, we pray for their minds, their minds, oh Father. We pray for sound mind. Oh God, we pray that as we teach our children, oh Papa, let your hearts be open. Let your hearts be open, oh Father. Let the Holy Spirit find his way through them in the name of Jesus. Oh Thank God, you. that you will continue to minister to them in all their ways, oh God. We pray this morning, we bring them to your throne of grace, oh God. Your word says you will teach them and great shall be their peace. Yes, Lord. Let them experience that. Let your peace come upon the heart of our children. Oh, Father, we know that you are all able because you are the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is within you, God. Take control this morning. We surrender it all to your Father. You are Lord. We decree and declare we are not carnal creatures. We don't have control over our lives because you are Lord. We give it completely to you. Father, we bring our children to you, oh God, because they, oh God, belong to you. You say we should not withhold them from you. This morning, oh Father, we bring them to you. We hide them in you in the name of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus, oh Father, we hide them in your name that is a strong tower oh father protect our children protect them oh father from the evil of this world protect them oh father from bad company bad counsel we pray oh god that even with the, the rampant things that are going on on social media and our children are so exposed oh god we pray that the right spirit will be in them and on them oh father that their judgment will be clear in the, yes. name, of in the name of jesus they will not be intoxicated by social media Oh, Father, we are so bright. Let them be able to choose and know that good is good and know that evil is evil, oh God. Yes, Lord. We pray, oh Father, that their eyes will be clear to see and know that this is a wolf in sheep clothing. We pray, oh God, that we invoke enmity between our children and evil in the name of Jesus. Amen. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our children, oh God. Yes, Father, Lord, we plead Jesus. the blood of Jesus upon our children. We soak them in the blood. We saturate yes, them with the blood, oh Father. Yes, we spare all that concerns them with the blood. Their yes, way to school, wherever they go, their path, oh Father, is soaked yes. in your blood in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father, we say when the angel of death comes, he will not find them. He will pass over in the mighty name of Jesus. We mark them with the mark of Christ. And we say, no one shall trouble them. No one shall trouble even Thank us God. in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord Almighty, take control over our lives, over Thank our you, children, over all that concerns us. 
Father, whatever we have is yours. Oh, and we buy all that we have. And we pray, Father, that whatever gift you've given us shall not become an idol in the name yes, of Jesus. Lord. Yes, Lord. Lay it at your feet. It is yours, oh God. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Take control, oh God. Thank oh, you. Father, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word that has come to us, oh Father. Thank you. We pray, oh Father, that we will experience the spirit and life behind this word. And our lives shall never be the same. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Mama Mildred and Brother Kwame, I hand over back to you, please. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for this word in season. Beloved, we just have to continue in the spirit of prayer. This is just a continuation of everything the Lord began to tell us from Tuesday, Wednesday, and even now. He says that we should not insist to worship him with all the baggages. Today, our sister has highlighted, our pastor has highlighted so many baggages that we insist to worship the Lord with. We live in bitterness, yet we want to worship the Lord. We live in loss, pride, unforgiveness, unhealthy um, competition and jealousy, yet we want to worship the Lord. Let's just lift up our voices and just repent. If you find yourself in any of these categories uh, uh, or more, just lift up your voice and call upon the Lord. Ask him to help you get out of it. Sometimes you may say, oh, I've been trying to get out of it, but I cannot. But the Bible says that we should not be drunk with wine. That we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. It may not be wine. It could be any of these things that have been listed or more. Just lift up your voice and ask the Lord to help you overcome so that you will not be, your sobriety will not be in, interrupted in the name of Jesus. Let us just lift up our voices. Father, Father we, we repent. come, oh we God, come this before morning you, oh God. with repentant we hearts. To identify we the come, things Father, with repentant hearts, oh God. God. Do we in honor, Lord God. Father, we wash the Lord God. Search my heart today. By your grace, that by your enablement, in the name of Jesus. I lay down in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that we will read us from this bitterness. Every time, O God, that we will be able to read us from this bitterness. Father, anger, God, we will be able to read us from this bitterness. In the name of your way right now, in the name of Jesus. You think about us, oh God, 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 that matters today. Everything that is in the grace we receive grace to overcome in the name of Jesus. We will not insist. To go through the gates of worship with all of this. we oh receive God, the grace to do the better. We receive grace to move lost, forward. Oh Lord, but we have come around this mountain be, long Father, enough, Father. You are still oh speaking means there's something we still have to deal with. So I pray, oh God, that we move forward, that we will not remain here in the name of Jesus, so that you can accept and receive our worship in the name of Jesus. May our lifestyles Speak, yes, oh God, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We will just continue to pray this morning because these baggages, we don't need them. These are the baggages that cause us to sleep at the switch. We don't want to sleep at the switch. We don't want to profess one thing, yet our minds are, are, are angled in a different direction and we are doing different things. I ask that we pray this morning and ask the Lord to give us his special grace to have disciplined responses 
to every adversaries that come our way. We need to have these disciplined responses so that we will be able to look at pride when it comes, anger, bitterness, unforgiving spirit, unhealthy competition or covetousness and loss and the many more. We need to be able to look at them in the face and say, there is a remedy for you in Christ. And the Lord has given me time to sit at his feet, to know that when you come, I would say it is written. This is how Christ conquered the devil. He studied the word, he knew the word, and he was able to have disciplined responses to every trick of the devil. So let us unmute and just ask God, Let's ask God this morning for disciplined responses to every trick of the devil. Let us pray. Father, thank you on the name of Jesus. We remember how our mother thank you for I just give you all the praise, Lord, and adoration of God. I give you praise because you know from the head of the of the head 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 of the 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 of the 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 Special attention to the word of God makes us understand that that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is in us. That is who we carry. So we owe the world around us manifestation of that spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that is in us. If we don't give it, it shows that we have not been good stewards. So let us ask God this morning, for the special grace to become good stewards of that spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that now resides in us. As good stewards, we will be those who have plagiarized the lifestyle of Christ, who will be reflective of Christ, who will be people whose lifestyles will be more than enough preaching to those around us. So let us pray that the spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from death, that lives in us right now, will receive full manifestation, will receive full expression, even in our own lives. Let us pray. Father, we pray, O oh God, before you this morning. We say thank you, Lord, because you have given us your spirits to reside in us. Pray for yourselves, even as I pray for us all, beloved. You can unmute and pray. We pray, oh God, that that spirit and declare that that spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now. Pray not only for myself, but we pray that the Holy Spirit is not able to make expression in our lives. We will not expect your spirit. Because of all in the name of Jesus, of Christ. anger, of jealousy, of bitterness, of righteousness, who have any kind of sin, and the stumbling block for the creation of the spirit of Jesus Christ. And bless the one and able of all the creatures of God, as we surrender our will to you, not our will, but that will be done by ourselves, Lord. So we have your divine way strength. and to move by your spirit in the name of you, Lord. Bless you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Can you just close us up for the afternoon? Then we'll share the grace right after. Who did you call upon? Pastor Isabel. Oh, okay. <laughs> I saw Pastor Jones, so I thought probably we were talking to her. Okay, let's pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to continue to give you honor because all honor is due unto you. Yes. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to hear from you, O oh God. Lord God Almighty, we just commit our lives to you and we say, Father, continue to impress on our hearts that which is of your heart in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray for grace to continue to grow in you and to be vigilant, oh Father, in our ways and to know that which is coming from you and that which is coming from the enemy. Your word says your sheep knows your voice and you know their voice. We pray this day, oh Father, for grace to know your voice, oh Father, and to continue to abide in you even as you abide in the Father. Lord God, let's be grafted in you because if we are grafted in you, all the devices of the enemy will not find its way in us because it will meet you. So Lord, help us that we may continue to hide in you in all our ways, all that we have, oh Father, to remember that we are yours and you are ours. Father, we just want to continue to thank you even for this service that we've had today. We thank you for each and everyone who was present and we pray, oh Father, that we represent our households in the name of Jesus. Oh Father, that you will answer us, oh Father, and that you will reach out to each and every one of our family members, our loved ones, and draw them to yourself. Lord God Almighty, we know that we will be saved with our household because that is your word. So we pray that anyone who has not known you, oh Father, we pray that this moment is a moment that you will move by your spirit and reach out to them. Father God Almighty, you can reach out to them in your own way that we can never comprehend. But we know with you, all things are possible. We just want them, oh Father, to be drawn to yourself, oh God, that they may enjoy the things that you've provided for us on this side of life, oh God. Because Lord Jesus, you promised that you came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So we pray for that abundant life for ourselves and our loved ones in the name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, we just continue to give you the glory and we say, Lord, you will continue to teach us as we go and holy spirit we just appreciate you in all the ways we appreciate you for en encouraging us we appreciate you for pointing to us those things that need to be done and those that need not to be done we just pray and say you continue to have your way in us all and even to the children of this generation in the name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, we cannot hide from you. You know the, the, the thoughts of the, the parents, you know their fears, their concerns, as I would put it, oh Father. Lord God Almighty, we commit it all to you, even as we're about to leave this service, oh God. We commit all our, our that might worry us, we bring it to your Father and we know that you are a loving God, oh Father, that you will impress on our hearts the hope that we have in you and also take care of all that which is our concerns. Father, we cover this day with the blood of Jesus. We cover the service with the blood of Jesus. We cover each and every one of us who was here with the blood of Jesus. I would say that which you have impressed in our hearts will not be stolen, oh Father, but it shall manifest and everyone will see and know that the Lord indeed is good. Father, to you be all the glory. In Jesus' name we've prayed, amen. 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 Share the grace together. May the grace of God, Lord Jesus Christ, of God, God, for the Holy Spirit, all the days of our lives. We will in the name of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Everybody bless. Love you all. Amen. Amen. God bless. God bless.